In this lecture, we shall discuss the composition of the Court of Appeal. The composition of the Court of Appeal. And we shall do the discussion. We shall have this discussion within the context of the Ghana legal systems and methods. Composition of the Court of Appeal. And we shall have this discussion within the context of the Ghana legal systems and methods. Now, the first point to note is that the establishment of the judiciary in Ghana, the establishment of the judiciary in Ghana is as we have seen under Article 126 of the 1992 Constitution. Article 126 of the 1992 Constitution. Article 126 reads as follows, and I quote, the judiciary shall consist of the Superior Court of Judicature, comprising the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, and that is where our focus is in this lecture, the Court of Appeal, and the High Court and Regional Tribunals, and B, such lower courts or tribunals as Parliament may by law establish. So Article 126 of the 1992 Constitution establishes the Superior Courts, which comprises the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, and the High Court and Regional Tribunals, and the sub lower courts or tribunals as Parliament may by law establish. So now that Article 126 of the Constitution has established the Court of Appeal, what then is the composition of the Court of Appeal. And it's important to mention that the court under Article 126 is the Court of Appeal and not Appeal Court. And not Appeal Court. This is because the description of the court under Article 126 is Court of Appeal. Capital C, capital A, Court of Appeal and not Appeal Court. Some people erroneously refer to the Court of Appeal as Appeal Court, but it is not the Appeal Court. It is the Court of Appeal. There's a difference. When you say Appeal Court, Appeal Court could refer to even the Supreme Court. This is because if you appeal against a decision from the Court of Appeal, the appeal could lie to the Supreme Court. In that instance, the Supreme Court will be exercising appellate jurisdiction. So, so in that land matter that you're appealing against the decision of the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court becomes the appeal court in that instance because it's the appellate court in that particular instance. In the same vein, if you're appealing against a criminal decision of the district court, you can appeal against that decision to the high court. In that instance, the high court becomes the court that has appellate jurisdiction in that particular matter. So if it's an appeal court, are you referring to the High Court exercising appellate jurisdiction? Are you referring to the Supreme Court exercising appellate jurisdiction? So to avoid that controversy, use the language and text in the 1992 Constitution. There is only one Court of Appeal, and it is that which has been established under Article 126 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana, where we have language to the effect that the judiciary can consist, shall consist of the Superior Court of Judicature, comprising the Court of Appeal. So please take note of the language, Court of Appeal and not Appeal Court, Court of Appeal. So there's only one Court of Appeal under our 1992 Constitution, because even if you look at the Court of Appeal and that's 126, there's no S even at the end. It's a, the, the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal. There's only one Court of Appeal in Ghana. Now, what is the composition of the Court of Appeal? Take a critical look at Article 136 of the 1992 Constitution. Article 136 of the 1992 Constitution. It reads as follows, and I quote. The Court of Appeal shall consist of A, the Chief Justice. 
B. Subject to clauses 2 and 3 of this article, not less than 10 justices of the Court of Appeal. And C. Such other justices of the Superior Court of Judicature as the Chief Justice may for the determination of a particular cause or matter by writing signed by him request to sit in the Court of Appeal for any specified period. This is a very interesting provision that the Court of Appeal shall consist of A, the Chief Justice, subject to clauses 2 and 3 of this article, not less than 10 justices of the Court of Appeal. And it doesn't end there. It says that such other justices of the Superior Court of Judicature are the Chief Justice made for the determination of a particular cause or matter by writing signed by him requests to sit in the Court of Appeal for any specified period. So what does this mean? It means that, first of all, the composition of the Court of Appeal, the Chief Justice, is a member of the Court of Appeal. That is the first input of Article 136 of the Constitution. In other words, even though the Chief Justice ordinarily is a Justice of the Supreme Court of Judicature, the Supreme Court of Justice, even though the Chief Justice is a member of the Supreme Court, which is higher than the Court of Appeal, we are told under Article 136 that the Chief Justice is also a member of the Court of Appeal. In other words, it means that if there's a matter pending before the Court of Appeal, the Chief Justice can sit in that cause of matter and participate in the adjudication of that cause of matter. So the Chief Justice is a member of the Court of Appeal. That's the first thing you should note. So you can go to the Court of Appeal and you can see the CJ presiding over a matter over there. It doesn't mean that something unconstitutional is being done because Article 136 of the 1992 Constitution tells us that the Chief Justice is a member of the Court of Appeal. The next point we need to note about Article 136 is that it fixes a minimum number of justices we are supposed to have at the Court of Appeal. It says it must be the Chief Justice and not less than 10 justices of the Court of Appeal. Meaning that at every point in time, the total number of justices of the Court of Appeal should be the CJ and no less than 10 justices of the Court of Appeal. If somebody can say that then the minimum number of justices should always be 11, because the Chief Justice is one, and no less than 10 justices of the Court of Appeal. So the 10 justices of the Court of Appeal adding that minimum of 10 to the Chief Justice becomes 11. So as the one six, the Court of Appeals shall consist of the Chief Justice, and then no less than 10 Justices of the Court of Appeal. It doesn't end there. It gives a very interesting provision as well, that such other Justices of the Superior Court of Judicature. Now let us go back. Who, what, what forms part of the Superior Court of Judicature? Look at Article 126. The Superior Court of Judicator comprising the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, High Court, and Regional Tribunals. This is what forms the Superior Court of Judicature. The Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, High Court, and Regional Tribunals. So when the Constitution says that the Court of Appeal consists of such other justices of the Superior Court of Judicature, what are they saying? The Constitution is saying that, apart from the Chief Justice, apart from the 10 Justices of the Court of Appeal, the Chief Justice may, for the determination of a particular course of matter, by writing signed by him, request any member of the Superior Court of Judicature. In other words, he may request any member of the Supreme Court to come and sit in the Court of Appeal. Because the Supreme Court forms part of the Superior Court of Judicature. And Article 1, that it says, plus 1C, says, such other justices of the Superior Court of Judicature as the Chief Justice may, for the determination of a particular course of matter, 
a writing signed by him will request to sit in the Court of Appeal. It means that the composition is the Chief Justice, no less than 10 justices of the Court of Appeal, and the CJ also has the power to request in writing any justice of the Superior Court. So he can request any justice of the Supreme Court, any justice of the High Court, any, to, to come and sit in the matter in the Court of Appeal. Because Article 136, Clause 1B, C of the 1992 Constitution empowers the Chief Justice to write, sign against it, and request any justice of the Superior Court. And I'm saying the use of the expression justice of the superior court means that they are referring to any justice of the supreme court or justice of the world high court to come and preside over any matter come and sit in any matter in the court of appeal but it shall be for a limited purpose the limited purpose in the sense that it says that such other justices of the superior court of judicature as the chief justice may for the determination of a particular course of matter by writing signed by him so when you are requesting a particular member, if you are requesting a justice of the Supreme Court to come and sit in the Court of Appeal, it is going to be for a limited purpose. It is going to be for a limited purpose of assisting in the determination of a particular course of matter by a writing signed by him. If you are bringing any member of the High Court to the Court of Appeal, it is for a limited purpose of allowing the High Court Justice to come and participate in the adjudication of a particular cause or matter. After that, you go back to your court. So this is a quite interesting uh, provision, as a the six, that the composition of the Court of Appeal is the Chief Justice, no less than 10 Justices of the Court of Appeal, and such other Justices of the Superior Court of Judicature as the Chief Justice may for the determination of a particular cause or matter by writing signed by him request to sit in the court of appeal for any specified period. Now, when the court of appeal is adjudicating upon a case, how should the bench be composed? How should the panel be composed in the event of the court of appeal sitting to adjudicate upon a particular cause or matter? Take a critical look at Article 136 of the Constitution, and the answer is there. Article 136, clause 2, reads as follows, and I quote The Court of Appeal shall be duly constituted by any three of the justices referred to in clause 1 of this article. And when so constituted, the most senior of the justices shall preside. The Court of Appeal shall be duly constituted by any three of the justices referred to in clause one of this article. And when so constituted, the most senior of the justices shall preside. The Court of Appeal shall be duly constituted by any three of the justices referred to in clause one of this article. And when so constituted, the most senior of the justices shall preside. So if we have to adjudicate upon a particular matter in the Court of Appeal, the number of the people you must expect to preside, even though we have said that the composition is the CG and other than 10, it's not as if all the 11 can go and sit. It's not as if 10 people, 9 people can go and sit. No. The constitution says that they shall be duly constituted by any three. It didn't say a minimum of three years. Any three, it means that at any point in time, if the Court of Appeal is sitting to adjudicate upon the matter, it is three of the justices referred to in clause one that must preside over the matter. So if the Court of Appeal says to adjudicate upon the matter, we are expected to see three justices. And when the three sits, the most senior, the most senior of the justices shall preside. And how do we appoint persons to the Court of Appeal? If you look at Article 136, Clause 2, Clause 3 of the 1992 Constitution, it says that a person shall not be qualified for appointment as a Justice of the Court of Appeal 
unless he's of high moral character and proven integrity and is of no less than 12 years standing as a lawyer. The Court of Appeals shall be duly constituted by any three of the justices referred in clause one of this article, and when so constituted, the most senior of the justices shall preside. And we are told that a person shall not be qualified for appointment as a justice of the Court of Appeal unless he is of a high moral character and proven integrity and is of no less than 12 years standing as a lawyer. So if you want to be appointed to the Court of Appeal, make sure you have met this qualification. One, you must be a person of a high moral character. You must be a person of proven integrity. And you must not be a person of less than 12 years standing as a lawyer. You must be a person of high moral character. You must be a person of proven integrity. And you must not be less than 12 years standing as a lawyer. So for the Supreme Court, we noted that for qualifications to Supreme Court, it must be not less than 15 years. For Court of Appeal, it says that not less than 12 years standing as a lawyer. And you must be of high moral character, proven integrity, and not less than 12 years standing as a lawyer. Now, I remember I mentioned under Article 126 that there's only one Court of Appeal in Ghana, because when Article 126 was listing the Superior Court of Judicature, it says the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal. It didn't say Courts of Appeal, Court of Appeal, singular. But I'm sure some persons may have noticed that there's a Court of Appeal that sits in Accra, and there's another Court of Appeal that sits in Kumasi. And there may be another court of appeal that sits in Cape Coast. So, for some persons, I'm sure the question is that how do you say there's only one court of appeal? When in fact we know that there's a court of appeal that sits in Accra, there's a court of appeal that sits in Kumasi, we know there's a court of appeal that sits in Cape Coast, and there may be some other ones that may be sitting at different parts of the country. So how do I then reconcile that with my assertion that there's only one court of appeal in Ghana? That is a very legitimate question because I said boldly that there is only one court of appeal in Ghana. Meanwhile, the fact on the ground show that there's a court of appeal that sits in Accra, at least another one sits in Kumasi, and another one sits in Cape Coast. So how then do I say that there's only one court of appeal when in fact we know that they are, we have a court of appeal sitting at different parts of the country? That is a very legitimate question. But the answer to the question is very simple. Even though there's only one court of appeal under the constitution, if you read the language of Article 136 plus 4 of the Constitution, the answer is there. And this is what Article 136 plus 4 of the 1992 Constitution says. And I quote, the Chief Justice may create such divisions of the Court of Appeal as he considers necessary to sit in such places as he may determine. The Chief Justice may create such divisions of the Court of Appeal, as he considered necessary to sit in such places as he may determine. In other words, there's still only one Court of Appeal, but the CJ has the power to create divisions. So if you come to Accra, you see that there is a civil division of the Court of Appeal, criminal division of the Court of Appeal. So what the Court of Appeal sees sitting in Kumasi the YC sitting in Cape Coast, they are not different courts of appeal. They are divisions of that singular court of appeal that is established and created under Article 126 of the 1992 Constitution. So, what they are is that they are different divisions of the court of appeal that is established under Article 136 
of the 19, and Article 126 of the 1992 Constitution. So it is still the case that under Article 126 in Ghana, we only have one court of appeal. Except that the Chief Justice is empowered by Article 136, Clause 4, to create such divisions of the Court of Appeal as he considers necessary to sit in some places as he may determine. And so, if we come back to Article 136, Clause 5, it contains an interesting provision that Subject to clause three of Article One Twenty Nine of the Constitution, the Court of Appeal shall be bound by its own previous decisions. Now you see, because there's only one Court of Appeal in Ghana, if the Court of Appeal in Accra gives a decision, take note that all the divisions of the Court of Appeal, they are all bound by the previous decision of the Court of Appeal. So if the Court of Appeal lays down an a point of law today, and another matter comes before that court of appeal, then please, that court of appeal is bound by its earlier decision. You realize the constitution says that it is subject to clause 3 of Article 129. The only court that, that the court of appeal is bound by the decision of the Supreme Court on questions of law. So when you read Article 129 of the constitution, we are told that on questions of law, the Court of Appeal is bound by decisions of the Supreme Court. In that same vein, the Court of Appeal is also bound by decisions to of the Court of Appeal. It means that the Court of Appeal is bound by its own previous decisions. So when the Court of Appeal gives a decision today, and another matter comes before that Court of Appeal, and it has similar facts, it raises similar questions of law, the Court of Appeal is bound by its previous decisions. And not only that, all courts lower than the Court of Appeal, meaning the High Court, the Circuit Court, District Court, they are also bound and they shall follow the decisions of the Court of Appeal on questions of law. So take note of this that the Court of Appeal is bound by its previous decisions. Not only that, all courts lower than the Court of Appeal are bound by decisions of the Court of Appeal. And also, the Court of Appeal is bound by decisions of the Supreme Court on questions of law. The final point we shall look at in this lecture is that some persons may have gone to the Court of Appeal and may have noticed that there may be a single justice of the Court of Appeal sitting. And so the question is that how then was it possible for a single justice of the Court of Appeal to sit when, in fact, we are saying that whenever the Court of Appeal must sit to do its business, there must be three justices. So for such persons, you may be wondering why, in such instances, there was a single justice of the Court of Appeal sitting over a matter. The answer is under Article 138 of the Constitution. It reads as follows, and I quote, A single justice of the Court of Appeal may exercise the power vested in the Court of Appeal, not involving the decision or cause or matter before the Court of Appeal. So you see, we are told under Article 138 that a single justice of the Court of Appeal, he can do what? He may exercise the power vested in the Court of Appeal. But it must be for a limited purpose. It must be for a purpose which is not involving the decision of a cause or matter before the Court of Appeal. So the single justice of the Court of Appeal, when he is presiding, he cannot adjudicate over a case that the he cannot give judgment in the case that has been appealed to the Court of Appeal. No. If I've lost a case at the Land Court and I've appealed to the Court of Appeal, the, the Court of Appeal justice cannot, single justice cannot determine the whole appeal. You may determine things that may not involve the decision of a cause or matter before the Court of Appeal. And let me give an example. At the Court of Appeal, There are timelines for parties to file their written submissions when that Form 6 is issued. So at the appellant, you have your number of days to file a written submission. Respondent also has his number of days to file a written submission. 
and it's when the written submissions have been filed. That is when the court of appeal will look at everything and now give you a date for the judgment. So what if you are supposed to file your written submission within 21 days and then you fail to file it within that particular time? What happens? You can apply to the court for an extension of time within which to file your written submission. Some an application like that for an extension of time to file a written submission, it can go before a single justice. Because when that single justice grants you the extension of time to file a written submission, he's not determining the cause or matter before the court of appeal. He's only giving you extension of time to file your written submission. And then when you file it, everything will come before the main court of appeal, who will now determine the appeal and deliver judgment. So Article 138 of the 1992 Constitution says that a single justice of the Court of Appeal, he may exercise the power vested in the Court of Appeal, but it's for a limited purpose. It must be for a purpose not involving the decision of a cause or matter before the Court of Appeal. And it goes ahead, except that in criminal matters, whether justice refuses or grants an application, that decision may be varied or discharged by the Court of Appeal has been constituted. So if you appear before the single justice and they give a decision and you're not happy, you may go before the three-member panel of the Court of Appeal for them to determine the matter for you. So that is how a single justice of the Court of Appeal can preside over a matter. So all we've said in this lecture is this. We said that the Court of Appeal is part of the Superior Court of Judicature created by Article 126 of the Constitution we have said that for the composition of the Court of Appeal, it is the Chief Justice, one, no less than 10 justices of the Court of Appeal, and the next one, such other justices of the Superior Court of Judicature, as the Chief Justice, made for the determination of a particular course or matter by writing signed by him, request to sit in the Court of Appeal. That is 136 plus 1C. And the next thing that we noted, that even though there's only one Court of Appeal in Ghana, we said that the Chief Justice may create such divisions of the Court of Appeal as he considers necessary to sit in such places as he may determine. The Chief Justice may create such divisions of the Court of Appeal as he considers necessary to sit in such places as he may determine. So even though there's one court of appeal, we may create different divisions. That is why we have one division in Accra, we have another division in Accra, we have another division in Kumasi, another division in, in Cape Coast. And also we mentioned that if the court of appeal is going to be constituted for the performance of its functions, it must be three justices. And whenever they preside, three of them will have to sit. And the most senior will be the one that has to preside. We have also noted that for the qualification for appointment to the Court of Appeal, you must be a person of high moral character, proven integrity, and not less than 12 years standing as a lawyer. And we've also noted that even though three justices of the Court of Appeal must sit over cases, a single justice can sit on a course of matter under some limited circumstances. And whenever a single justice sits, they must be determining what will not involve the decision of a cause or matter before the Court of Appeal. This brings us to the end of our lecture on the composition of the Court of Appeal in Ghana. And this is where we shall draw the curtains. Thank you.